and uh, tonight I'm uh, going to be speaking with at least Dave Kelso, if not a delightful friend of his. Um, and uh, well, we'll we'll wait because uh, there, there's there's uh, there's still some doubt as uh, as whether she'll uh, she'll arrive in time. But anyway, uh, for the moment, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I spoke with Dave and uh, Jay, and we were talking about the truckers and uh, what they were going to do this last weekend. And it seems that things have been done. Dave Kelso, welcome to Journeys. Yeah, um, you left your, your DeLorean parked in my garage, so sorry for the confusion. So, you know, the whole August thing. Oh, that one. Uh, yeah, well, it, it, wasn't it this year? The actual date? Oh, was it, no, it was 2015 or something. In, from the or film. something, or 16 or whatever. I don't know, I'd have to look it up. Meanwhile... We're getting close, though. <laughs> it is getting close. It's getting much more like a, oh, you know, that's only a couple of years away kind of thing. As a, ah, oh, that's loads mm-hmm. of years away. You know, so <laughs> here we are in science fiction world. Uh, and um, the paradigms are flying, but not the cars just yet. Yeah, well, um, we'll hopefully be talking about paradigm shifts uh, later on. Um, you know, we're all, all three of us are kind of involved in that <laughs> way. But uh, let's talk about what we last were speaking about as was going to be in the future. Now it's in the past. What happened at the weekend? You were saying stuff about uh, um, truckers going to Washington. And uh, now it seems that there are a whole load of veterans there that were going anyway. <laughs> and uh, things got quite, quite interesting. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it to you as cub reporter Dave Kelso. Yeah, Cub American reporter who's been keeping track of the stuff in his own country. Um, it's been rather interesting. Um, apparently the whole idea as far as the Congress, the, um, truckers going into arrest Congress, um, that was apparently a little bit of a misunderstanding between the truckers and the Alex Jones show. Um, because uh, well, I mean, no disrespect to Alex or anything, but he does have a big ego. He is, he does like to hype some things more than just a little bit because he does have a business to run. And every once in a while, he'll either exclude certain information due to rating it, ratings issues, or he'll put in just a tiny touch of disinformation to take an actual issue and kind of pump it up a little bit. And um, the truckers really didn't appreciate the fact that um, Alex had done that. So that is where the whole arresting the congressman thing came from, you know, as well as the whole, you know, um, calling out the National Guard and the military and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Um, actually, the truckers... Um, According to them on Facebook, um, the truckers themselves were actually working, you know, rather closely with um, law enforcement and doing the best, you know, their best to, you know, keep the peace because um, obviously both sides knew that, you know, tempers would be flying and um, uh, neither side wanted anything stupid to happen, which um, really amazed me. And it, it does show, you know, the, the changes in the energies and in the consciousness because, you know, even a year ago, I think both sides had just been like, bring it on, you know what I mean? And, you know, people are just, just seem to be, um, you know, coming, to, putting things together instead of, instead of pulling things apart. I mean, I mean, I've been seeing, you know, groups of people that, you know, normally would be brutally against each other on all issues, basically, you know, having an attitude of, well, you know, I still think you're a bunch of morons, but, you know, I kind of do agree with you on this one thing. You know, so it's, you've got, you've got minds starting to open a bit. And, um, the veterans thing came in with the whole shutdown because, um, you got Vietnam vets, World War II vets, so on and so forth that, like to, you know, visit these memorials and stuff to, you know, honor their fallen brothers and, you know, so on and so forth. And um, they blockaded these things off and the veterans were just like, well, you know, that's not going to stop us. It's just, it's just public property. 
And quite honestly, it, co- it costs more money to, um, to, to guard these things from people than it actually does to maintain the land. Because the land is low maintenance. I mean, what, the grass janitor's gotta come in once in a while and mow the lawn? Bit frickin' deal. But these rent-a-cops cost a lot more money, and in some cases, real police officers. But either way, you're spending all this money to keep people out of there, and it's a lot more money than the actual maintenance cost. So, you know, it just goes to show that, um, you know, this whole shutdown thing is nothing more than the dog and pony show to try to cater to the whole left-right paradigm thing and try to pit people against each other. And, you know, this administration is scared because it's not working. It's only bringing people together. And there was a lot of veterans that were dead asleep about, you know, all the stuff that's been going on in the world. And just like, oh, Illuminati and this and that. And that's all just conspiracy theory, delusional kooks, you know, blah, 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 whatever. They just were in cognitive dissonance and they couldn't believe it. And now it's like, wow, all this stuff is actually real. <laughs> you know, they're just, they're starting to see exactly, um, what sort of governmental structure we really actually have. And they're starting to wake up and they're starting to confront the cops and say, hey, look, we both swore an oath. The difference is, is that I'm keeping it and uh, you're committing treason. So you need to pick which side you're on. Are you, you know, against the people of this country or are you working with us? And, you know, if you're against the people of this country, well, you know, if you're an enemy combatant, then, um, you know, we're, we're all going to do what we're all going to do and it'll get messy. But, you know, it doesn't have to go that route. You know, we could allow just cooler heads to... To, to prevail and, uh, you know, and chill out and do the right thing and then it, it doesn't have to go there. And, you know, the cops know that the, the vets have definitely superior, um, fighting and, and strategy and, you know, training and all that that they got, you know, from their war experiences than any of these cops could ever hope to have in their wildest wet totalitarian dreams. Um, so they know that these vets are not ones they want to be tangling with on a battlefield. So there's minds that are opening. And even though, yeah, there's been some stupid stuff happening, like they're arresting, you know, 90-year-old World War II veterans and, you know, things like that, um, that only attracts more veterans to come out and do it. And the only reason they got arrested is because they were there in, in very small numbers. Um, as you know, the more numbers you do these things in, the cops are less inclined to uh, start things with you. Especially when you're talking about a bunch of veterans that have had the training that they've had. You know, so they're, they're, the veterans' initial mistake was to, uh, to be defiant in small numbers. But then they decided, oh, we're not going to make that mistake now. We're going to come in large numbers. And so now they're coming in large numbers, and you're not seeing these arrests happen anymore. Because, you know, they'll pick on the small fry. These, these cops have, you know, no freaking shame. But, um, you know, large numbers, they, they cowered out. Yeah, it's the... Um it's the uh, it's your, your pol- police service. I mean, um, used to be the service. It's not much of a self a service, sort of self service these days. Um, it's I mean, from the outside looking at American police, it's, we, you know, we have very little like that. I can actually have a conversation with a policeman over here and, and uh, tell them stuff, and, and they'll go, "Oh, really." <laughs> yeah, I, we they're can't, not like Judge Dredd, you know. Yeah, we, we we can hear to a point. It depends on what what um, sort of cops you're dealing with. Like, I can only speak for Chicago, but here, um, the police precincts are divided. Um, you have the cops that are waking up, and you have the cops that are still dead ass asleep, and um, they're kind of bickering back and forth with each other because. The ones that are waking up don't like what's going on any more than anybody else does, and they're doing their best to mitigate things, but at the same time, they don't want to make too many waves because they know that if they lose their positions, then they lose their position to, you know, set some balance into the system and do some good in the face of these cops that are doing completely the opposite of good. So, you know, it really, really depends on 
exactly which cop you're talking to. So that's why discernment is very important, intuitive discernment, critical thinking, um, especially here in Chicago, because you know you got to kind of get a feel for what kind of cop you're talking to, as far as what you can and can't say to them. Um, and as far as you know, the police, the police mostly being. You know, service to self that they got on the cars. We serve and protect. And my dad's joked around for a while that, you know, after we serve and protect should be the word ourselves. But, um, I always jokingly say, I look at the police car and I'm like, you know, you guys spelled a policy wrong. It ends with a Y, not an E. They're, they're enforcers of policy. They are not keepers of the peace. Well, as, uh, I, I, I said to, to, to the, uh, the police, uh, officer who, uh, I spoke to last year. I, it was um, the first thing I, I said to her: um, I, "Are you a police officer or a, a police woman?" And uh, she kind of, she, I, I saw her kind of visibly. She stretched her uniform. She tucked it in. She took a big deep breath and said, "I'm a police officer." And I just said, "Oh, so you're a t- <laughs> you're a revenue collector then?" And um, and. I could see her kind of visibly just kind of <laughs> re- regain her size and she kept on trying to bully me and uh, every time I counted exactly with what what she just told me in plain English and uh, and she, 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 there was no argument it was like every time I said something <laughs> I just reflected back flat unemotional truth and uh, I did feel that I had a kind of big golden beam of light shining from the heavens on me you know saying <laughs> we're not going to take this <laughs> the, yeah, an- yeah. the angels don't <laughs> like this we're, we're, we're having no fun so uh, I, I felt kind of supercharged there but um, yeah. here in Chicago for a lot of the revenue that's collected on things like parking tickets um they have these, um, I guess the proper term is meter maids. They're not real cops, quote-unquote, but they work for the precinct. And, you know, they, they go around checking for, you know, like if you, you know, your your plate and your sticker and whether or not you're, you're parked where you're supposed to be parked and got money in the meter and, you know, whatever else. And, um, you know, if not, they'll write you up the citation. And... Um, Basically, um, you know, our, our mayor, um, R- Rahm Emanuel, it's like, um, when, when, when these guys are out on the street, you know, me and my dad like to say, oh, look, it's Rahm, Emel- Rahm Emanuel's vampires. The vampires are out. The bloodsuckers. And they just laugh because they know it's true. <laughs> they know what they're out there doing. They know it's true, so they laugh. Sucking the blood of children. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, the yeah, we call them traffic wardens over here. They're like not quite police, and now they've been given like you know they give them radios and and uh, they kind of like toy police. And our police are becoming. Um, this is the city police. So, you know, I live out in the country here in the really yeah. rural places, so you don't see these guys so much. But there's. Uh, the city police are more like your your um, you know, Ameri- Gestapo, American Gestapo, yeah. Um, and you know, we have to realize, we have to realize that you know, you know, we're looking at Nazi America, like yeah. we looked at Nazi Germany. We're now looking at the potential and the very great likelihood of Nazi America. There's no potential and likelihood. It's been for a while. It's just like, you know, we're not waiting for it to happen. If people here, here can't see that it is happening, then, you know, they're, they're taking some really strong drugs. Um, I mean, I'm, you know, when things happen, you know, I've got the balls enough to, to call them, you know, babysitters and Gestapo and enforcers of policy. Uh, you know, I do that. You know, I, I, I'll just be like, look, you know, I, I understand what's going on here. You know, you got the badge and the gun. Um, you're the Gestapo. You are the law. What you, what you say goes. And, you know, it doesn't matter what the law in the book says. These police here will actually admit that they don't even know the law. I try to ask them questions about basic law and they tell me, oh, you'd have to talk to a lawyer about that. Cause, you know, I don't know. I'm a cop, not a lawyer. And I'm like, oh, so you don't know. The law that you're enforcing, okay. 
and I kind of stop and think for a second. They, um, they, they're not really taught that sort of stuff. So, uh, um, so, actually, I'm realizing that my volume is, is a bit low. Uh, I'm hearing you fine. Yeah, yeah, it's just the way it's going in there, so maybe I can... And synchronistically, I just checked into yeah. Facebook, and at the same time as I'm checking, Katarina's writing me a message, it hadn't even popped up yet, and um, there we go, she just told me, all right... Let me know. Um, we are on air right now. We are on air do, right now. You can do type. Do you want to use Skype or phone? Yeah, and drop that number in if she's got the. Uh, if she yeah. can only use. If she can only use a phone. Use the uh, the dial-in number that I call. Her. Yeah, she yeah. said she's at the Newport Pier right now, over the ocean. And I'm waiting for her to reply as to whether or not she wants to use Skype or phone. Uh-huh. Yes, Katar- so. Katarina will be, uh, when she, when we can pull her in here, we'll be talking about her experiences with using, whether you want to call it quantum physics, metaphysics, law of attraction, law of alignment, whatever, in practical application terms, but um, exit all the Peter Panny wishy-washy new agey BS. Um, you know, we're not going to be treating it like it's the quantum edition of the Home Shopping Network. Um, so she just wants to share her experience to kind of bring it down to earth and put some realism in it so that it's not seeming so Peter Panny. Okay, where did we put that number? Um, um, um. Six five seven. Okay, five, nine, hold on a second. Okay. Call one, one double seven six, five. Five oh. What one seven seven on double seven five? Yes. One seven seven five. Okay, go ahead. Six five seven. Six five seven. Five nine seven three. Five nine seven three. So it's one seven seven five. Yes. Six five seven. Five nine seven three. Three. That's the one. Okay. Highly enriched happiness. She said phone, but wait, it's windy. I'll need to find a not windy place. <laughs> find a, a, a sheltered nook somewhere. Yeah. So, where were we? Uh, so, w- so everybody drives up, uh, and there's a whole bunch of people there. Um, have there been any videos made, Dave, of the um, of the proceedings? What happened? You know, some sort of people filming the. I, I saw people arranging barriers. I think that was quite sweet. Oh yeah, they were actually. They went one further. Um, the, the we had the uh, Million Vet March in D.C. And um, the Million Vet March actually took all the barriers and marched them and piled them in front of the White House. That's very nice. That's very nice. It's very nice of them to, to leave the place tidy. <laughs> <laughs> I personally think they should have pitched them over the fence and littered the White House lawn with oh, them instead yeah. of, you know, actually <laughs> putting it out front. Some poor Mexican would have had to repair all the divots. <laughs> so, <laughs> meanwhile... Meanwhile, uh, so the so what happened? The, I mean, nobody got arrested, presumably. Well, like I said, there were some arrests before, but I'm not sure as far as the later stages when more I'm, people I'm were. I'm talking about Congress. Oh no, 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 <laughs> so, no! That was all hype. <laughs> so we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have Drake and, and everybody kind of piling in there and uh, arresting Hong Kong. No, nope, not quite, not quite time for that yeah. sort of thing. Uh-huh. But but we did scare the the bejesus out of Congress and Obama. As a matter of fact, well, the vets were marching out there as as uh, Obama was sneaking away in his helicopter. He had snipers out on the roof aiming at the veterans, just in case. Yeah. Isn't that uh, just a lovely way to uh, to honor your veterans? Get snipers out on the roof, aiming at them. Well, they they know that the vets are the most dangerous for Americans. They got they they train them yeah. themselves, you know. Yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the thought just passed us right by me. Um, it was a. Yeah, never mind. Um, you know what I think the high school kids in DC should do? They should TP the White House. That'd be cool. TP it's an oldie but goodie. It's a classic. Don't don't you don't you have that in uh, in the UK? The idea of TPing. No. You, you take you basically you take toilet paper and like just you know load up your target with it, whether it's a tree or whether it's a house or whether it's a school. It's referred to TPing. 
Oh, right. So you, well, like, you, you wrap it round, and you, you unroll the toilet paper all around it. Yeah, well, usually what you're doing is you're launching the toilet paper roll up, so it unravels as it's spiraling up. So, and then, you know, it comes back down to the ground to where you can retrieve it, break it off, and do it again. So it's wrapping around a part of your, your target structure. The roll returns so that you can continue the process. Ah, that's good. Of course, toilet paper is completely, um, biodegradable, so it's, it's not technically vandalism because you're not doing any damage. It's just annoying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because it's completely biodegradable. Mm. I mean, you couldn't flush it down the toilet if it wasn't. Mm. You know, let it rain enough times and it'll be like the stuff was never there. Um, <laughs> but I think they should, just a high school kid should just TP the White House. That'd be freaking great. Just every point of it that they can access. Just launch all kinds of toilet paper. I mean, if each kid bought like a 12 pack of toilet paper and there's how, how many thousands of kids in DC and they just like all went up there and just frickin' went at it and uh, on the White House, they could just like cover at least the, uh, the outer surrounding, you know, borders or whatever. I doubt they could get actually close to the White House itself unless somebody had some sort of TP launcher or something. I don't know. But, um, they could at least surround the perimeter with toilet paper loaded up. That'd be great. Yeah, that would be a, a, an interesting campaign. TP the White House. There you go. Mm-hmm. Remember where you heard it first. And make sure that the TP is white. So I had a very interesting conversation this afternoon um, with uh, someone called VK Durham. Um, she said she called the number and no answer. Here you could 775-657- Five nine seven three. That's right. Um, she's saying there's no answer at all on the line. Oh, it's probably no. Oh, Dave, uh, <laughs> uh, Dave, if you can hear this, or Sally, if you're there, uh, this is going to take a few minutes. Um, Why don't I just link her in? It would be so if that's fun. possible. Let's do it. Then do it. That is yes. completely possible. I offered that earlier, but you're like, no, no, no. The call line would be better. I'm like, okay, I'm not arguing with JP. Don't argue with JP. <laughs> <laughs> so while Dave is skittering across the, t- the uh, keyboard there... Um, Please hold. The next available Katerina will be with you momentarily. Okay. Um, we're, I'll just remind everybody that we are listening to several so- user-supported or listener-supported stations. Uh, we're all in it together. This is We're all one being and we're all teaching ourselves and learning ourselves and uh, exchanging information. We don't earn a penny, but it does cost money to run this thing. So if you can uh, divert a few of your funds towards the donate button of uh, Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com or Wolf Spirit Radio at wolfspiritradio.com. Uh, uh, or personally, uh, everbeyond.info at uh, everbeyond.info. And uh, uh, Scottish Sovereigns on the Land, .ning.com, is also No Borders Radio, which is... Ah, oh, now I've got the phone. Won't let me conference her. Uh, oh, so, no, as, uh, as she can dial in now. Thank you she very can? much, Dave. Yeah, Dave has just set me up. Um, so try it again. I think the devil wears a tinfoil hat. Well, maybe he's got a copper headband as well. <laughs> How to build a UFO. It looks like they're having a real good fun on the other, on the other channel here. Um, they never talk to me. But anyway, um, so J2BS is saying, I really hope that enlisted soldiers were watching what happened so they find out the truth of what they're doing. That's absolutely right. Um, yes. All right. Okay. So, uh, how are we doing, Dave? Hopefully, um, we're doing what we're doing, and what the end result will be what it'll be when mm-hmm. it happens. I mm-hmm. I know as much as you. I'm just going through the motions. <laughs> yep. Uh, right. So I haven't got that. So um, let's hope that uh, trucks on I-495. Yes. Um, that's good. So we're waiting for Katrina to call in. Uh, so I didn't really want to start an, another topic. But, um, now, if she can't get in the number, the only other thing I'd I'd be able to do is if I could. You connect. There we go. I, there we go. Oh, Here she is. Oh, we got her. 
Do we have... Hello? Hello. There's Katarina Edwards. Yay! Welcome to Jersey. Hello, coming to you live from Newport Beach. <laughs> Pardon <laughs> On the spirit here, right here. in the background and, and wind gusts, but this is where I am at the moment. Okay, well, welcome to Journeys with JP. On We're on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, and we're on Wolf Spirit Radio, and we're on No Borders Radio, and we're on everbeyond.info. So uh, there's loads of places people can be uh, tuning into this. And, and a uh, partridge in a pear tree. That's right, and one of those. <laughs> and uh, so Dave has been raving in the way that Dave raves. Great. About <laughs> how how absolutely awesome you are. So you've got a lot of expectation here built up, and oh, I don't think you're going to dis- nervousness on me. Huh? <laughs> he's only teasing you, uh, Katarina. No, I'm basically, not. here's here's what I said. I said that you know you've just been through a lot of paradigm shifting and personal evolution, and you know whether you want to call it quantum physics or law of attraction or metaphysics or law of alignment or whatever that um, he wanted to get on and present it in a non-wishy-washy, non-new agey, no BS sort of, you know, way that people can relate to instead of what, you know, like the secret, you know, treating it like the quantum version of the home shopping network and then people wonder why, well, I can manifest but I can't keep my manifestation, WTF. Well, it's because the manifestation is supposed to teach you about the universe. Um, it's not mm-hmm. like, you know, hi, thank you for calling the universe. Can I have your 16 so, different credit card number, please? So, Dave, Dave. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Uh, Katrina. <laughs> oh, I love how you just cut him off. I think that's awesome. <laughs> I, oh, sometimes he needs it, but I love you, Dave. Um, so. Well. So. At least she's not embarrassed um, to tell me she loves me in public. Hang on, Dave. Hang on. Dave. <laughs> Dave, if you could, if you could just, just mute for, for, for a little while. Mute for a second. Thank you. I got this, Dave. I got this. <laughs> So I take it that Dave hasn't really told you very much about me in terms of, like, semantics or anything, right? Uh, well, I, I, I've seen your photograph, uh, and uh, so um, that's that's about as much as I can do, but I can see a lot from a photograph and <laughs> tuning in and all of that. Um, but uh, welcome, and uh, it's lovely to have you on. And um, I, I can see, you know, you're not unused to public speaking, uh, and, uh, you know, you've, you've spoken, uh, in, about your, your topic before, so I'll, I'll just, um, would you, would you like to kind of, like, where do you start kind of, uh, part of the conversation? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, my, my history, my background is probably like the best place to start because I think it's the most relatable for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know, just, I was, I was pretty much like the rest of the population, just very stuck in my victimization a couple of years ago, and um, I'm much like everyone else in the sense that I had, you know, like this inner, inner voice that kept calling me to get out of that situation, and I feel like a lot of people have that, they get it suppressed through having family members tell them, you know, that, you know, you're always going to be this way, you know, the negative programming that a lot of us suffer with. And, um, you know, me personally, what I was dealing with was I was dealing with a really serious bout of anorexia as well as um, just a lot of self-worth issues, self-image issues. And, you know, it's not just something that young teenage-year-olds have to deal with. It's just about everybody in our population. And it affects so much of our lives and what we feel like we're capable of and what we feel like our full potential really can be when we're feeling like we are worthless, basically. So, so fast forward a couple yeah. years later, I had, you know, quite a couple <laughs> extreme episodes of paradigm shitting <laughs> in terms of everything, you know, from getting quite sick and developing fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and all of these crazy illnesses that, you know, all the doctors told me were completely incurable and completely um, irreversible, really. And I didn't really accept that at all because I had seen too many people healing themselves with cancer and um, diabetes and all of these other illnesses that you know are supposed to be completely horrible and 
extremely supposedly incurable. Really. Yeah, I'm being incurable, and so I spent a whole bunch of time researching. You know, almost to the point of exhaustion at some time, just because I was so determined to find the secret or the answer or the cure or whatever. And so I started coming across people that really started drawing my eyes to more of the metaphysical sense and realizing that, you know, some of these belief systems that I've completely internalized have been part of the root cause of what has made me so ill. You know, it, it, it started the anorexia, it started all of the low self-worth issues when I was a child, and then it carried on throughout and manifested in different ways. So if I didn't get rid of the core root paradigms that were causing my life to feel and be complete crap, um, <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to get any better anytime soon. I'm happy to say now that I'm feeling extremely better. Um, I have not been in pain for about two years now, no sign of fibromyalgia or anything like that. And I owe it all to, you know, late night sessions of me sobbing on the phone to my friend Dave Kelso and me like it completely just dismantling who I thought I was and um, you know having to let go of a lot of the crap that I had been carrying on from the past and a lot of the resentment and a lot of the guilt and the blame and the shame and everything that is so poisonous and toxic to our biological beings and as well as our spiritual beings really and you know and I think that that process has been the inspiration for where I am now in my life because now my passion is to really help spread awareness about it and do it through means of like social media and stuff like this and hopping on radio shows like this and just being like, you know, if I get any chance to really spread awareness to some people who might be struggling with something similar, I would love to help because I know how absolutely crucial people sharing their personal experiences and their stories when I was down and out um, have really made a huge impact on me. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and the path that you've taken um, is one that you have... have uh, it's like you were given a set of problems to deal with and you've worked mm -hmm. your way out of them and now you're showing others how that worked for you. And that's how you're a pioneer. In a sense, yes. And I don't really teach a modality because I don't really believe the heart has a modality. There's so many people out there that want to teach their, like, specific processes and everything like that. And, I mean, that's great and everything. I think it works for some people. But I was never one of those people. You know, I always found my, break my biggest breakthroughs after, you know, having to face like head to head some of my darkest shadow crap you know it wasn't all fluffy honeys and you know fairy tale <laughs> chickens and all of this stuff it was, it was pain it was really really miserable at points but I'm not saying that it necessarily needs to be that way for everyone it was just my requirement of my paradigm that it had to be that way so, so if I can show people how to do it in an easier way just like how Dave is helping people he does it through humor and he does it through comedy and I resisted that at the beginning because I was so used hey, to being torture. Yes, Dave? May I mention something right quick? Um, yeah, for sure. For, for, for people who want, like, roughly four hours, give or take, of actual, like, real-time, you know, examples of exactly what Katarina was just talking about as far as her and I going through the things back and forth that we've gone through, actual real-time video <laughs> coverage of yeah. these things. Just go on my YouTube channel, Paradigm Shift, Docs, D-O-C-S, the number four and the letter U, and do a little search in there. There's something called Overcoming Fear of Self-Promotion. Self and it's like four yeah. parts, and it's like, you know, four hours worth of stuff, give or take. And it's, you know, from when she was here in Chicago. And it also includes some, you know, Google Hangout stuff with, like, me, her, and our um, em uh, other, like, Empower Network friends, Amir and uh, Nabil, and so on and so forth. It, it includes a bunch of, of online side notes, too. But a lot of it is her and I, in person, literally dealing, uh, you know, with this stuff in, you know, in real time. And it act it's actually showing these processes of paradigm shift rather than just talking about it and one important thing, about, yeah one thing that we stress strongly in there is that like 
people like me and Katarina, we're not, you know, sitting on our clouds going, oh, yes, we are transcended, and you people out there need to transcend too. <laughs> you know, it's like it's the, the way we've dealt with stuff is by, well, as Tobias Lars might want to say, uh, deal with your demons and face your um, your your crap. <laughs> because, um, yeah. you, you know, I'm, I am no saint, not by any stretch of the imagination as Katarina. I, I, I keep out. trying to stretch my imagination, but so, sadly, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, well, in a universe of infinite poten- potentiality, good luck trying to stretch your imagination. If you succeed ever, let me know. I won't hold my breath. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just making the point that we're, uh, you know, people put other people on pedestals, which is nothing more than a target range that, you know, you're shooting at. And, you know, it's, it's not about, oh, love and light, shun the dark. You know, it's about, facing and embracing this stuff and moving through it. So, yeah, I'm going to go back to shut Yeah, on, on that note of, you know, it's not all up and light. It is also, you know, you need to face your darkness and everything. Um, you know, people also need to caution against going too dark, too, as well. Like, I I, um, I went through a period of that where I was like, you know, really embracing my shadow self, and I was just kind of mean all the time. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, people really need to, like, practice balance and exercise caution in both ways. I mean... Uga-chaka, it's just, uga-chaka. Yeah, Ugachaka, Ugachaka. Dave, Dave calls it my my inner turner ogre. He calls me ogarina when I get into that mode of uh, <laughs> being like quite um, self victimizy or just what, what else would you say it is, Dave? Just and the uh, ogre and the ogre owns some real estate, but we won't go there. Yeah, when it just it's takes it's over it's my life, joke. really. And um, <laughs> I. I think we all have an ogre, honestly, and that's part of what most of the healing has come from is just kind of allowing my ogre to be there because, you know, there's no point in getting rid of it because, you know, it's there for protective mechanism, as, you know, some of us know, and it was there to serve us at a point in our lives, but it's not there to control our lives. Ogres have layers, you know. Ogres have layers. Layers. Like an onion. Yeah. Ogres have layers. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, I was just shrugging. Um But yeah, it's it, it's very, very important. I mean, I don't think that we can actually put a limit on how dark you should go because you have to go as dark as you get because we've all been abused and that's where the darkness lays and you have to face it full on and realize what it is and because we're seeing it, it's coming out now and all over the, all over the mainstream, you know. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, gotta face it. But well, don't let okay. It so, let me, let me, let me rephrase myself, Dave. Hang on a second. Yeah. I, I'm just talking to not to the point of homicide. We need to be responsible with what we find within ourselves. Um, finding better outlets for it than you know going and hitting up grocery stores and mass murdering people. I mean, as responsible, conscious people who are, I mean, at least aspiring to be conscious, I guess. Um, Transmuting, okay. tra- transmuting, shifting transmuted. perspective. It's, it's, no, it's not okay, honestly, to go kill people. I mean, that's kind of what we're trying to do all of this work to do is to help people sort of come out of that stage of of uh, dysfunction and and deep, deep despair. I mean, if we Your find thing that Obama's with, not uh, here for awesome. debate, his, his drones that disagree with you. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, Dave. Dave. Like, Dave, like I, I cannot please. endorse killing anybody or, you know, inflicting pain on other people when we really know that we could be using it some other way. Like, for me personally, I write a lot. Um, you know, I have no problem, you know, having an entire page of the F word if I really need to get it out and just, like... You know, imagining scenarios of like, you know, blowing people's heads off, or something like that. Like, <laughs> and I'm not needing to actually act it out in 3D because that's how people go to jail and that's how people, you know, get themselves into trouble. So while we do not fully exist within the 5D realm at the moment and there are consequences for our actions, um, I think that is my disclaimer. 
<laughs> to getting in touch with your shadow self. Uh, you know, I think. But, um, so, uh, but I think there's nothing wrong with feeling. You know, it's no, when you no, act it out not. that's when problems happen, and this yeah, is what we're trying to get. The, 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 or when you beat your children or something oh, like that. Right. Like no, I yeah. just feel like that that is kind of heart shattering. But it's it's fully okay. Like like I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who, you know, went to Peru and he took um, ayahuasca with shamans and everything like that, and he, you know, had a vision of setting his entire world around him on fire and you know his children were on fire his family members were on fire and then he asked you know his guide like what is this and he said this is what you do with your presence this is what you do just by you just speaking to your family members you set them on fire wow and, you know, what that's, an that's a very interesting metaphor because our words can be like that we can set everyone on fire because we're just we're just absolutely decimating them with our words. Hot blast. So, I mean, like, it, it, it's, it's a chance for you to see things a little more clearly, like ayahuasca and, you know, meditation and then all of these things that people use to really take a look at themselves. It doesn't mean he needs to go, like, actually, like, pour gasoline all over everything and just set it all ablaze, but it, it's a symbol. May I inject a disclaimer about the whole fire thing? What? I said, may I inject a disclaimer about the whole fire thing? <laughs> Watch out what you what you're being injected with. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> even though disclaimer, even though, we're, even though we're, you know words do have power and all that, um, don't be afraid to shine brightly and be yourself mm -hmm. because. There are just people that you're going to um, set on fire just by standing in the room not even saying anything. There are, there are people that are just looking to bring you down to their level. and They don't even realize they're looking to do it. They've been raised this way. So anything you say, they're going to take offensively. And one strategy that I've used that, that kind of puts balance to things because uh, anybody who knows me knows that I'm very blunt and um, I don't spare my metaphors to make my points. I hit hard when I need to. I also, I also make sure that I tell them. I mean, literally tell them, not just hint. I mean, I go into detail. I say, look, you have the right to think, feel, and believe whatever it is you want. I'm not here to try to tell you what to do or say that what anybody's doing is right or wrong or whatever. I'm just being honest and sharing a perspective with you. And my perspective is that your head is in a very inconvenient place, and here's why. You know, and I'm open to their feedback. And I tell them it's okay if they want to judge me negatively. It's okay if they want they want to hate me, whatever they want to do. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, no, no, shame on you. You're being rude, da-da-da. If, you know, calling me a finally understanding chakra knowledge, and that's an acronym, by the way, fill in the blanks, if they want to have that attitude towards me, then, you know, that, if that's a genuine, if they genuinely feel that, then okay. You know, maybe they need a, a circumstance where they can get that out and have someone like me say, look, you know, I don't hold that against you. I feel that you have every right to say everything you just did, just don't expect me to align with it. Don't expect me to agree with it. I'm not looking to conform you. I'm not looking to be conformed. I've said my piece. You've said yours. And cool, you know, it, it's all good by me. Think and feel and believe whatever you want. We all have that right. I think as long as we respect each other's rights to that, then um, our words, even if they're setting things on fire, the fire is able to be put out quickly. And I've noticed that in conversations online with people. It kind of, you know, gets people thinking. and, and okay. What's up? Um, yes. I mean, I'm, I think that you shared that, like, perspective of awareness and everything with everybody, like, being able to um, deal with situations in that way. But they shut angle, up. I hope, you, I hope you understand that my angle is a little bit more of, like, when we ourselves are feeling, like, discompassionate and feeling, like, not giving a fuck about anybody and not feeling conscious and not feeling like we want to be considerate to other people, you know. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, I'm just I'm just sharing a sideline perspective. Yeah, I know, you're understanding a side yeah. perspective. I just wanted to be clear that you understood where I was coming from, too. 
Oh yeah, I totally do. I mean, Jay has okay. his take, uh, JP has his take on things. I have my take. You have your take, and it's kind of coming together in you know uh, one single cake. All ingredients coming together Got in the it. cake. And that's another important thing for people to understand. Just because we have slightly different perspectives on things doesn't mean it has to be this ego battle of the perspectives like Highlander. There can be only one, you know. They're all valid, and instead of fighting each other, they can all come together to form one cake. Yeah, just realize that it's me that's right all the time. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, but we all look for the ingredient to blame for the existence of the cake, don't we? And then we wonder why we never see anything. Uh, What's the what are you gonna say, JP? So anyway, <laughs> so thank you for that disclaimer, Dave. Although I'm not hey, entirely sure, sure what, what you were okay. what, you, what you were disclaiming, but but uh, you were talking about your friend who had taken ayahuasca, um, and yeah. uh, what? Well, yeah. So so can we get back on that rail? Yes. Um. That was pretty much all I had to really say about that in particular in terms of relating my point to anything. So you can definitely take it in any direction you want from here. All right. But um, so uh, in in your journey, because, th- I mean, this show, Journeys, I speak to people about where they're at in their journey. You know, I've been speaking with, uh, for instance, Tracy and and Rebecca when we you know how we, we've kind of evolved over the years since we've known each other online and and been doing these talks um and mm-hmm. uh, so you know you'll you'll you know hopefully uh we'll uh, speak more in the future and uh, discover more about each other's journey um so this is the kind of this is the kind of conversation that uh, that, that we have and and it's it's the insights uh, that uh, that I call the nuggets. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I went mm-hmm. through all this, all of that, all of this whole drama, all this whole story, and I realized that it was this feeling that I needed to feel. You know, these yeah. the, these are the insights. I have a question for Katerina. Yeah, I'll go for it, Dave. I would like Katerina to elaborate on. I guess the more quantumness of her experiences and, you know, what what would happen when she would resist aspects of herself and what the quantum mirror would reflect and attracting abundance and resisting abundance and just the synchronicity. Okay, just, just one question at a time, Dave. One question at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't overload me. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just... <laughs> we got plenty of time. Well, Katerina, that, that's one Katerina. The so, question is, is, will you talk about it? Oh, okay. Could you give me a smaller jump off plane <laughs> for a second? Well, let, let's say the about quantum. What when I resist stuff. Yeah, the yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, because uh, this is everybody's experience. I mean, you're going through an awakening, um, and you uh-huh. have a, a unique perspective that that from your background will give you your own um, way of dealing with it. Which can be valuable to others, having f- finding themselves in the same position emotionally. Con- context, and, and context, quantum synchronicities, that angle. Of yeah, it. yeah. What he said. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Um, for me, at different points in my life, the resistance um, has manifested in a various amounts of ways. Um, Particularly when I was quite ill and I would be going through resistance, the universe thought it would be really awesome to show me where I was resisting things just through my physical symptoms. It would um, really, really flare up, like pain would flare up if I was in a mode of resistance to something. Um, you know, I would notice just like like this plethora of just arguments flaring up around me um, just because I've... In, in more of like a shamanic sense, I can kind of sense like when things are off just within myself by what's going on in the world around me. Um, I don't think it's like a direct one-to-one re- ratio, like reflection, but I think that there's definitely indicators. But anyways, um, so everything that I would be experiencing inside 
if it would start to amplify and I would be building up and building up, building up and building up and, uh, like getting to that point of almost like wanting to explode, you know, I would <laughs> like have breakout acne or like really bad digestive pain or, you know, really bad headaches and backaches. And, you know, the funny thing about, you know, the medical system and everything is that, you know, when we have things like that happen, we want to diagnose and treat and, you know, fix symptom and everything like that. And, Oftentimes, what I found was, you know, dealing with some of the underlying emotional turmoil was good enough to help me alleviate my symptoms and make the problem disappear altogether. So, um, I mean, that's just a little bit of, that's my little nugget for people is, I mean, before you medicate, investigate, really. Ah, nice little nugget. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I expect from your rays. So um, I, I don't know if Dave's told you about the rays. Uh, this, this, uh, My rays? Your rays. Have you heard of the seven rays? No, I haven't told her. Please do explain it to uh, her because right. I have not told her at all. All right. It's the way that uh, everything is part of a spectrum of or frequency um, that goes from very, very high to very, very low, but it's always arranged in octaves, and all the octaves have a correspondence with each other. And so a note of C, for instance, might have a correspondence with the octave of light, which is red, uh, or it might have a smell, which is like sandalwood or something like that. You know, every frequency has a corresponding frequency that works just like music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, uh, our soul and our personality and our um, all of our energy is vibration, and all the mm-hmm. vibrations occur in notes. It's music. We're all music, frozen in time. Uh, and the seven rays are basically the qualitative aspect of frequency. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kat- Katarina, would yeah. you like JP to give you a ray reading? Because he has the ability to show you what your rays are and tell you about it. So I haven't told him much about you, so this should be interesting because you're going to find that he is very accurate. So take it away, JP. Yeah, go for it. Okay. If you want to, that is. Okay, so um, now uh, when I talk about the rays and I speak about the... Um, the, the ser- there's a series of numbers which is called a package, a ray package um, and mm-hmm. I generally work with the, the highest three, it's like your higher self so I'm reading mm-hmm. like the energy of your higher self and your high- the most high is called the monad and that's like the spark of God within you, okay mm-hmm. uh, and it, or the oversoul you know, the, the, the point of contact of the collective um, God mind of the galaxy of the Mm -hmm. universe right Uh, and that comes in three flavors one two and three (laughs) and um, and uh, so you you belong to this uh, this ray one group and the ray one groups kind of got a a basic intent Um, and uh, the the intent is to um, manifest the truth okay and that Mm-hmm. seems sometimes to feel a little cold because it can be a little impersonal because it's big um, so mm-hmm. sometimes you may feel that you know personal situations and personal issues mm-hmm. are really not your concern and you're right but uh, you know it's good to be compassionate and give, <laughs> give people time and space if you see what I'm saying mm-hmm. um, your soul ray therefore it comes from this um, first ray group and the soul ray uh, comes in uh, as one of seven and uh, th- so we say first ray soul, second ray soul, third ray soul etc um, and so you come in on the ray two right now what I was saying before about the, the rays is that they have uh, correspondences everywhere uh, and when you see like a triplicity of something, three of something, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Mother, Soul, Collective Consciousness, you know, um, there's there's the one aspect is is what they call will, and that's the crown center, and the two aspect is the heart, you see, and that's the the heart center, and it's the soul, and the three aspect is the uh, throat, so those are the higher centers that. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, in your highest 
expression you know uh not your ego well the e ego is where, where the uh, the third the third uh, number is is the personality okay so we have got mm -hmm. the, the the monad the which is the one and recognizes itself as one <laughs> great sound effect is that a <laughs> seagull agreeing with me <laughs> yeah, those are seagulls. <laughs> so that's Ray One, uh, which is will, and Ray Two, which is uh, is love, wisdom. Okay, uh, and so mm -hmm. uh, people with Ray Two uh, tend to have um, interest in healing, and what often mm -hmm. happens is that they experience a life challenge that they need to get over once they've done so they then have a modality does that make sense yeah okay so um you have a seventh ray personality so you've got a ray one two seven okay uh and the um so what that would give you is a pro you'd be in line to uh, go through a series of experiences learning how to fix yourself and then uh -huh. going out and wanting to fix others because you can see, because you've had the insight, you've suddenly seen it, instead of seeing it from the outside, you've seen it from the inside. And that's what you just told me, actually, because that's what you just said. You, you, you experienced all this stuff that people say, oh, you've got MA, you've got fibro, blah, 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 blah. You've got blah, 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 because I don't know. Yeah. But what it is on the inside is you're having a conversation with yourself. And you're, mm -hmm. you're speaking to yourself and you're saying, I am absolutely burned out. And what's really burned me out is because I believe this and this was my behavior. And, and mm -hmm. that's the way it goes. And this is, this is how illness generates. And, and so you found out by going from the outside in, believing what other people to told you. Eventually you say, no, screw this. All right, here we come to the end, the top of the hour. Don't go away. We're talking with Katerina Edwards, and it's uh, okay. getting very interesting now. Yes, your host, JP, journeys with JP tonight. My journey is with Katerina Edwards and Dave Kelso. Uh, so, Katerina, we had gotten to a point where you... Um, where, where I'd kind of uh, describe the first... The, these are the rays that I speak about. It's, it's the monad, the soul, and the personality. And that's, you know, uh, everybody's got their own system, but it generally kind of boils down to virtually the same thing. Um, and mm -hmm. these are the, what, we, what we call the higher self, the high, you know, the higher angel of yourself, um, and the, the trinity of that. And, um, and so what that means is that you dived into this situation. So... Um, and but the other thing is that you know the 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 second ray thing gives you this this um, uh, well uh, it's there is an element that is like um, why me about it mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> yeah so yeah it's that's part of the second ray characteristic which is like oh life is terrible to me you know I'm the butt of life's humor um, etc. <laughs> Uh, and there is this feeling of you know it's it's it, and it, it it's uh it's a little it's a way we can express our dislike for action really and our excuse for inaction um and uh these are these are the things that uh, that uh, people tend to suffer from but there comes a point when um you get the kick in the rear and uh, there's no turning back and this is what you were mm -hmm. talking about the, now um the way uh, different rays deal with this situation, deal with this conversation, um, uh, changes as as the, the the ray expresses in different frequencies and different flavors. So um, the way that a third ray personality would express the same angst and issues and and work them out would be different from the way a seventh ray would, but they would be complementary. There's a, there's a complementation between two and uh, between three and seven. Um, and that's <laughs> there's a long story why, <laughs> but uh, uh, but suffice to say that um, the seventh ray expresses as a building of structures. Um, it mm -hmm. 
it likes making laws, it likes making rules, it likes understanding um, nuggets, <laughs> as I call them, you know, little aphorisms that are metaphors for the fractal universe where it expands into uh, uh, into uh, infinite repetition of the same pattern. That seems to be the way mm-hmm. nature is, you know, little trees reflected in the leaf, you know, and all that stuff. Um, and so by looking at the way... Uh, nature ex- expresses through ourselves we then um, form our way of working into the world of nature and the world of reality and uh, part of your, your mission <laughs> is to um, is to express in the world um, it's uh, yeah it's coming into the world of belief right and this is uh, you have a connection with the world of belief systems, which is like uh, uh, it's a throwback from a, a, other lives, from other lifetimes, um, and it can leave you open to uh, influences that will uh, draw you away from the higher forms of, of thinking and conceiving which you need to be at. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? You get the diluted in the minutiae of the world, uh, but there exactly is exactly what I was talking about with uh, everything that I had experienced. That's right. So um, it's important for for your for for someone with your race to really take space, um, and mm-hmm. that's probably the beginning of your healing when you decided that you really needed to do that. Is that right? Yes, yes, because I became very antisocial when I started healing. <laughs> I just really, really needed to be alone. But those five months went by so quickly. Well, more like two years <laughs> before I met you, Dave. Oh, okay, you're talking about a different point in time. Well, speaking yeah. of paradigms, I have a question for you, Katerina. Yes. I would appreciate it if you could please explain um, your business and the paradigm dichotomies to where there are certain people who look at it and go, oh, that's such a scam because they're so trapped in this idea of money rules everything and in order to make money you have to take from others and be a bad guy and leave them out in the cold in order to benefit yourself. And people just have a hard time thinking that there's actual ways of actually making money that that doesn't require you know inconveniencing others. Like you know, simple example: YouTube Partners Program. Have fun making content, make money doing so. But people even freak over that. Like, oh no, no, that can't be. That's oh, what's the catch? And what you're dealing with is so awesome that people's brains just split. Even mine was going crazy for a while in it. So please explain the issues people have. Uh, no, uh, no pressure. A lot of these people. No, there's a question. I, I will go in that direction if, it, if JP does not mind because I really don't want this to become like a business show. I was really just kind of talking to, you know, JP yeah. just about deeper stuff. But well, just I mean, the paradigm of it. going in that direction. Yeah, just the paradigms of it, the the, the mentality that people have against it. You don't have to go into the details of all your business, but more the paradigms people have, why this cognitive dissonance happens, because they're in one paradigm. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, Dave. Just hang on. Okay. JP, can I get what you were saying? Because I think Dave ran over you. (laughs) Um, uh, Actually, well, I mean... (laughs) <laughs> this is part of it. So let's 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 just talk about this um, because the this is um, something that you've built as a result of mm-hmm. your uh, experiences and how you um, worked your way out of the experiences. So, um, were you were you in were you a business person before? Were you did you have the like a corporate thing going on? Uh, I struggled with it, and that was a reflection of the resistance that I had within myself. You know, Dave would would always be trying to encourage me to do something, and just because of the level of resistance I had within myself against, you know, being self-promoting or even getting myself out on the Internet or anything like that, I was just so deathly afraid of even being on camera, let alone speaking on, you know, Internet radio or, like, this past weekend I spoke to a room of 2,000 people, 
like like you know that kind of thing um I just didn't do it because I was so self-defeating and you know I just had so many of my own limiting beliefs and blocks around um being able to be a self-employed entrepreneur you know what I'm saying Dude, they um, pulled you on stage. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Congratulations. What? what they you pulled said? you on. They pulled you on stage. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Congratulations. What I've been saying though is that, um, like, Dave, you remember when I like first started making videos, right? Yeah. Okay. You remember how um, anything you would suggest to me, I would completely throw it out the window, right? Yeah, especially in terms of, hey, Katarina, it's okay to be yourself. Just say this. No, Dave, I can't say that. What will people think? And do you remember also just recently, like, when I started, like, telling you more and more how I was being myself, right? Mm -hmm. With absolutely no more effort, you know, videos and um, Facebook posts of mine have just been like getting shared and liked on and everything and everyone's talking to me and everyone's interested in what I'm doing because that is a quantum reflection of what I am ha what's happening on the inside for me and so this this is not something that is just like you know empower network related or you know internet radio related or anything it, it goes all across the board because when you're holding yourself back from being who you are and you're stifling your voice and you're stifling anything that you want to share with the world um it's reflected and there are things in your life that it gets reflected through like you know your bank account your um the amount of interaction you have on facebook or whatever other venue it is that you're looking for interaction on that would help grow, grow your business so I find, honestly, that, you know, this is sort of the more quantum aspects of what I do. Because, I mean, you know, what I do, is, it's, it's a blogging platform, and it helps people who want to get a presence online get them online. But um, what we do is a lot of internal work and belief work, as well as, you know, business training and marketing training. So they are, they are two things that cannot be separated because if you do not have the internal mindset stuff right, then your business will fail invariably and you will not be happy and it will be a very big struggle the entire way. And in the beginning, I struggled a lot. You know, I struggled online for two years, not Torture really chance. knowing. Yeah, like I, I had no <laughs> idea what to do, even though the answers were right in front of my face because... I, I didn't believe it was easy. I didn't believe it was possible for me. I actually faced a lot of resistance from my own family. My father would always be telling me, get a job, get a job, get a job. Um, my my mother was sort of on his side. My older brother stopped talking to me. Um, he just did not want to have anything to do with me because he thought I was a failure and a fuck up and all of this, all this stuff because that was what I felt on the inside about me because I got sick and, you know, I had really no energy to work a traditional conventional job and even to this day I've never had a traditional conventional job and, you know, in a, in a way it's been a blessing because otherwise I don't think that I would be uh, on the path that I am. So more of the more of the metaphysical aspects of what it is that I'm talking about and doing is just really getting right within yourself, being yourself to the fullest, and that's really one of the premises of what I do and what I teach is um, being yourself to the fullest because, you know, I am right there in the trenches with everyone else who's aspiring to do that too, you know. I'm not perfect, but I still am, you know, in on my path doing my best to live every day and to um, be more aware of what I can do to be more of myself. So in what way has uh, your perception of how you can um, how you can fix your own problems? I mean, because that's basically what we have to learn to do is how to fix your own yeah. problems. Um, and you equip yourself with various tools um, you know, yeah. seven, the seven, seventh three personality is very much a, a tool oriented thing. You know, uh, it likes to, to know rules and structures of, you know, this is the pattern of how this works. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there, there are different ways of approaching these different 
situations, but they all conform to patterns, and and you have the the keys. It's it's like the you know literally <laughs> keys in music. Um, <laughs> yeah, ahead. there's people out here on the gear. But um, <laughs> to answer your question, I mean, I think that inquiry and being able to really challenge belief systems has come down to you know. I, have you ever heard of Byron Katie? <laughs> it's funny as I was just just thinking um, as you was as you said the word belief systems, I just thought uh, of Byron Katie's inquiry method, and you just said it. it so exactly. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That changed my life, really. That really did change my life because I didn't have, you know, like a format to go through in the beginning because I just kind of, I felt like almost like I was going insane because I was so steeped in questioning my reality and I didn't really know which way was up or down after that. But um, Baron Katie really helped me lay it out because um, just her, her, and for any of you who don't know who Byron Katie is or what she is, I would go on YouTube and just type in the work of Byron Katie, and she goes through all of these, you know, actual applied sessions of working through belief that, you know, at the end of it, the people come out and they're like this flower that has blossomed because they just realize, like, how false their belief system was. And that's what I've applied, and, you know, it's not, like, a perfect way of applying it. It's not like every single belief system I have, I go through all four questions or something like that, and it's, it's really neurotic and strategic like that, but it's just kind of like, it's, it, it, it's not something that you have to practice all the time because it kind of becomes a way of life. Like, things will arise, and, you know, my boyfriend is so sweet. He's so, he's so amazing. I showed him some of Byron Katie, and now if I am in, like, a moment where I feel like I'm really stuck in my suffering or if I'm really stuck in... Um, my uh my my thoughts and my patterns and everything like that he'll actually ask me for myself you know is it true is that true katarina and you know we'll stop it right in its track because you know i have somebody who acts as more like an anchor for me so anybody else who's interested in that that's something that i really would recommend it's not something you have to be 100 percent perfect at because there's no way to be perfect at it and that's what i love about it it's so. a it's a very useful tool um, yes, it it's really called is. The Work by Byron Kate. They're big on it here in Findhorn. Um, I live mm -hmm. about uh, 10 miles from uh, Findhorn and I know lo loads of people. <laughs> you know, I just have, you just have to mention The Work and there's these, these three faces that, yeah, where you are. And they're, they're <laughs> deeply into The Work, you know. Have you done The Work? You know, oh, man. Yes, I have and, and, done the work. and Byron Katie comes I've... here and she comes and visits and talks to everybody and, uh, they were all one big, very happy, uh, new age family. But anyway, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a I actually, I, I stayed with a, a woman in, um, Hawaii who has, you know, been on her spiritual journey for about four years, you know, studied with like Aborigine shamans and everything like that. It was like an ordained minister for Chikapan and like that kind of stuff. And the work of Byron Katie is what she will use more often than not to help people get out of their suffering because um, she knows how how powerful it is and she's not like a new agey fluffy fluff kind of person she's mm. really into you know fire goddess and like just really like fierce compassion and all of these other sort of disowned qualities of women really and she does yeah. a lot of work with the dream body if you know um, of Arnie Mandel and his work with the dream body it's it's pretty profound work as well. So I mean, there's there's a whole slew of things that I've kind of taken from while I have you know been in search for my perfect modality, which I don't really believe there is one perfect modality, but there are definitely individuality. Are individuality, that's our modality. Individuality, not someone else's, but our own way. The whole the whole truth thing, though, that you were talking about is hey, Dave. What's up? And I don't have that much longer to talk, so if you want to talk, I'm really encouraging you to kind of hold off at the moment because I actually have to get going pretty soon. Okay, so, make sure you um, keep the links and stuff, how people can get a hold of you before you jet off. Okay. Is there is there any other questions that you have for me, um, JP? Um, well, uh, can, if you could connect with me on... Uh, on Skype one day when when uh, when things are uh, settled for you, uh, uh, be yeah, that'd be awesome. Interesting to uh, to have some more conversation, um, and 
maybe connect you with some other people that uh, that you might be interested in meeting. That'd be good. Awesome. Yeah. That'd be great. So, um, um, how do people get hold of you? And uh, or, or or do you have um, Facebook? Facebook is honestly the best way to get a hold of me. Um, I'm on Facebook every day just for through what I do and you know connecting with friends and everything like that. But my name is Katerina Edwards. It's K A T E R I N A E D W A R D S. And um, you know I live in Portland, Oregon. So if you want to search that too, <laughs> if you can't find me online by searching my name, but that would yeah. work. And um so search yeah, on YouTube for Katarina you. Edwards. Yeah, YouTube too, if you want to hear more of my rants. That's good too. <laughs> yeah. You have um, to just search Katarina Edwards spam, she'll get spammed with her stuff. It's awesome. But um yeah, so and if you do find me through this radio archive, just let me know that you heard me on JP show. So then I will know who you are. You know where you heard it? <laughs> So, uh, thank you so much for having me on, JP. You're very welcome, Katerina, and it's very nice to meet you. And um, yes, uh, we, we, if you uh, we'll we'll talk, we'll talk, and um, and uh, because there there are yeah <laughs> yeah we'll talk. Thank you very much for coming on. Okay. And um, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Katerina. Love you. You're welcome, babe. Thank you. I love you too. God bless you. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you for coming on. So, Dave. I told you she was awesome. Oh, bless your heart. Totally awesome. So... Although, as fun as all this is, I think that next time she's on, it should probably just be her. Yeah. Provided she has a full two hours. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure that could be easily arranged. <laughs> Um, Although her her and uh, Jay Larson talking is uh, interesting too. She knows him too. Good, good. So maybe next time uh, you could have uh, her and Jay on. I think that would that would definitely be interesting for your audiences. Well, Jay is uh, experimenting at the moment with the Joe Cell, and we'll have him on probably next week talking about the Joe Cell. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of a Joe Cell. Um, I came across okay. it. <laughs> in about 1998 or seven, maybe even before that, but uh, around uh, the, the just a few years before the millennium, and um, I remember reading about this thing uh, that that magically kind of made fuel <laughs> <laughs> that that came out and and it it, it had some. They you didn't know, say anything about it. They not, didn't say anything about quantum. Quite, it, it, it's not so much that it, it, it magically makes fuel. It, it's it's really weird the way it works. Um, I've been I've been trying to understand it. Um, I mean, it, like it has its own charge, and there are many different applications for it. But to the best of my understanding, what I've seen and what Jay's explained to me, like was somehow like it's able to like if you hook it into a car. It's able to somehow create a, a vacuum in the pistons to where it, it, it pulls them in instead of pushing them up. So you end up not needing gasoline for the car. It just works on that system. I don't completely understand it really. It's it's really weird. Oh, and it'll it'll let you light water on fire. There's actually a video of that. But it's a, it's a cold flame. It's not a hot flame. It's Really bizarre. Um, I'll have to look that up real yeah, quick. The, it yeah, that room. crazy. People can look up. Um, it's called Brown's gas or HHO gas, um, and uh, it's produced by this Joe cell, um, which is made of concentric rings of stainless steel, um, and uh, they are, you, know, you apply a charge, quite a high current charge, across the thing, or you can uh, apply a frequency, a uh, high current. Um, which is really good, uh, and that cracks water like an uh, opera singer singing, uh, singing a high note, cracking the glass. And uh, the water cracks into hydrogen and oxygen, which is what HHO means, um, and uh, 
uh, then you burn it <laughs> very soon, very quickly. Try not yeah, to store it. Yeah, I've got the link. It's it's a small clip. It's it's not exactly the the best video of this that's out there. There's a better one I found a long okay, time ago. Well, but this one is the most immediately available. Yeah, I'm putting that, it in the Wolf Spirit yeah, chat. Yeah. If someone else could could put that in the Revolution Radio chat, I'd appreciate it. Whoever wants to go ahead and do that, I just put it in the Wolf Spirit chat. Anyway, so we won't be talking about that tonight, though. <laughs> because that's what we're not talking about. Um, I have a conversation that I had today um, with uh, VK Durham that I'd like to play uh, in the final half hour. So, Dave, um, thanks very much for coming on. Um, do you have any final messages for the people? Um one thing I was going to say earlier is that um, Katerina made a very important point about what she was talking about as far as uh, truth um, because you know like you, like we've been talking about everything's a, a reflection of everything else and her and I are a lot alike and we're best friends and we mirror each other a lot and one thing that people have a tendency to do is as long as they can think that they're alone and they're crazy then they can justify their self-victimization. But when she started seeing that her and I had a lot of things to like and that I was doing different things with these same qualities, she was forced to face that, okay, well, maybe she's not crazy. Maybe who she is is actually valid. And that ego just wants to whine, like, oh, my God, now I don't have my excuses to hold on to anymore. Dave. Oh, and she did Dave, she did Dave, Dave, thing. we don't have much time. It was just very brief. Thank you very much for um, coming on. Um, I, thank you. I've got to play this. Thank you. Okay. And good night. Let's do this thing. Good night. Welcome to Ever Beyond 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 Be prepared to leave your belief systems behind as we go beyond teachers, beyond gurus, beyond duality, ever beyond, 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 beyond. Talking with VK Durham, I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, just allow you to speak for yourself and uh, make your announcement, and then I'll get it played over the air. So, um, thank you very much for uh, for uh, 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 consenting to this recording. Oh well, that's quite all right. I, I have been working with Dave and um, Clay Douglas, so as you know. Um, but the, something has come up that's pretty wor worrisome. Jamie Dimon over at J.P. Morgan has more or less threatened Congress and uh, telling when they wanted to know about the debt payment or uh, what they should do about the debt ceiling and, and, and what would happen if it wasn't met. And Jamie Dimon and his, his little arrogant self, well, you don't really want to know. Well, come to find out, uh, this was just exposed today and brought to my attention today, is uh, J.P. Morgan um, has control over the food stamps. And so to me, and I'm certain as to everyone else, this is a veiled threat to Congress. Well, number one, Mr. Diamond is a damn thief. Now, on December 2004, um, he put into his... Uh, uh, as his collateral base instruments that belong to this trust. And he did so without our authorization. 
Okay. And now, now he has the unmitigated goal to try to hold this nation hostage and threatening uh, Congress, giving a veiled threat to Congress. The state don't really want to know what's going to happen if the debt ceiling isn't raised. Well, number one, honey, they can't raise that debt ceiling because there's a 143-year-old law that's in place. 143 years. It's the Anti-Deficiency Act. And that Anti-Deficiency Act is applicable to federal employees, not John and Jane Doe public, not you, not me, not my dog out here. But it is applicable to federal employees. If they fund something without there being uh, adequate money in the coffers appropriated legitimately by Congress to pay for the checks that are being written on the people's bank accounts. Now, that's nothing more than writing bad checks. And he's trying to threaten Congress. He's threatening all the people with starvation. They have the, uh, J.P. Morgan has the promise system, which controls the computers. You saw recently what happened with uh, the food stamps, the ETBs. And now th- this is this is financial terrorism. This is economic terrorism. And this is espionage. This is treason. Now, for someone such as Jackie Morgan, who has the key to the U.S. and U.K. Federal Reserve. Banking system, which are which are private, they are not uh, they are not federal at all. To sit there and write bad checks, force those checks upon the people, jeopardize our properties, our homes, our health, our livelihood, our food sources, and have the unmitigated goal to threaten Congress. Now that, my dear, is the people's problem. And I think the people can handle that one very nicely. Very nicely. I think all of you should be thoroughly incensed at what's going on and that Congress and the House, the Senate, hasn't had the kahunas. I don't know of any other polite way of saying it without getting vulgar, and I hate vulgarity, and I'm getting prone to it through my just this. <laughs> but they haven't had the kahunas to stand up to that idiot, or to any of these idiots on Wall Street, who have systematically been raping this country and every nation on the face of this earth. They want to, they don't want to jeopardize their uh, retirement portfolios. When the dang fools don't realize when this thing goes down, they're in the muck pot with the rest of us. So, I don't, I, you know, we've offered them, uh, we paid the U.S. debt and the uh, American debt, continental debt of 6.5 trillion in 2003. And that was used by J.P. Morgan again, and it was leveraged through Clearstream. There's 6.5 trillion sitting over there in Clearstream. So the American people should be demanding answers instead of sitting there and saying, "Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I'm going to wring my hands. I'm going to cry. I'm going to stop this. Whatever. Well, get off your dumb butts and do something." I don't think any of you realize what's going on here. I don't think anyone thinks. It's enough that, my, it's like my husband said when they brought him home from that kidnapping of October 17, 1993. And he was sitting there on the sofa and they said, my God, Russell, what happened? 
what in the world happened? And, and the man, he sat there with that thousand yard stare looking out at the, out of that glass storm door. And he sat and he sat and I, and we just all sat with bated breath waiting to hear what he said or had to say. And he finally he said, when the American people wake up and realize what the federal government has done to this country, he said, I wouldn't want to be in the executive branch. I wouldn't want to be the president. I wouldn't want to be in the House or the Senate. I wouldn't even want to be a judge on the bench. I wouldn't want to be a governor. I wouldn't even want to be a local mayor or a dog catcher. He said, because the people are going to be so angry. They're going to round them up, give them a fair trial, and hang those suckers on the Capitol steps. And I said, I turned and I looked at Russell and I said, Russell, what in the world? You can't give someone a fair trial with the predetermination of hanging them. You can't do that. He said, yes, you can. He said, treason. He says, and I will tell you, they will decorate the steps of the Capitol and every lamppost in this country. He said it will be a bloodbath, and before he said it's going to take 200 to 250 years to get this mess straightened out again to where people can live in civilized societies. J.P., that's a hell of a statement to make. So it is. Not only that, I don't know if you realize it, but that's almost 20 years ago to the day. I know. I know. Bless your heart. I know. And then for them to sit there, they tortured him. You wouldn't believe how they tortured that kid. But I've stood here and I've, I've held the battle. I've stayed the line. For the American people. And for the people around this world. Who have lost loved ones. To this criminal. Cartel. That such as we have. Operating in this nation. And is terrorizing the entire globe. Blackmailing Congress. Threatening Congress. Threatening the people with starvation. Now there's you tell me where is our law? Where is our law? Where is the spirit of this nation of 1776? Or is it still sitting there puffing joints, drinking beer, having tailgate parties sexing out and said oh well we'll worry about that tomorrow no you don't worry about it tomorrow it's here to stay it is now this is now time I am at a loss as to the lack of as granddad used to call it he called it gumption plain old fashioned gumption I'm appalled at the lack of gumption in this nation. Now you see nations and people in nations around the world, they're rising up over this. And soon this is going to be coming to our door. And then I want to know how Congress is going to sit there and allow themselves to be threatened, coerced, intimidated by people such as Jamie Dimon. That's what I'd like to know. I'm 77 years old. I've seen a lot of things happen in this world. 
in my day. I've seen a lot of good happen, but mostly I've seen bad. I've seen leaders plan wars 50, 70 years in advance. Now, why do we need wars when everybody can live in peace? There's enough benzene that's put in plastic bottles that's created a problem where the males can't even reproduce. Most of your males are sterile. Why are we having to kill people? Why? It makes no sense. Why are these mining companies and, uh, and manufacturers allowed to contaminate our rivers and our waterways? Why are they above the law? Why? Well, these are the very same corporations that George H.W. Bush sold this country out. He sold off our infrastructure paid for by the American taxpayers and Executive Order 12803 in 1992. He sold your highways, your bridges, your waterways, your dams, your airports, your health care systems. He sold uh, Social Security, went to the Queen of England. If you don't believe it, go over there on my website and you'll find it. You look in the documents section. There's just too much going on that the American people have been denied the knowledge of the history of their nation. The American, our men, the, the, our, our, the flowers of our field were left in Flanders in World War II, and now they're taking our young people and using them for uh, guinea pigs for uh, big pharma. Medical experiments all over the world. And they're so drugged up they don't know what in the hell's going on. And now you've got a president who's sitting there asking the generals and, and the military personnel, would you fire on the American people? Well, this is, this is ridiculous that this kind of goings on is allowed to happen. Where is the spirit of 1776? Americans go anywhere in the world and fight for the freedoms and the liberties of every nation, every down and trodden person all over the world. And they don't have enough gumption to fight for their own here at home. Well, I guess I've just about said it, PJ. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, VK. And um, uh, if, uh, with your permission, could I put it out on uh, YouTube? Oh, well, certainly you can. Certainly, sweetheart. I'm first. I'm an American. Yes. yes. Last, I'm an American. But most of all, it's Semper Fi, guys. Semper Fi. To the end. The very end. So, so that's where I, and I'm not associated with Rayland Allen at all. No, it's, it's just people have uh, mentioned you on that uh, on, on that uh, site. Uh, that's a, so, VK Durham, thank you very much for uh, appearing on this <laughs> improm impromptu recording, uh, and uh, I wish you all the best. And really, I feel that the whole thing is is, is going to unfold and uh, implode soon. Um, it, there's too much truth coming out. Uh, well, I agree. I agree. I just received some uh, videos in here from Russia that were sent in by one of the investigative journalists. And uh, it was on Operation Gladios, and I have been working on that for years, you know, uh, 
you can check out Gladios on my website, which is uh, theantichamber.net. And I think uh, you can just about go in there and type in anything you want and come up with it, with whatever you need. But I think what we're looking at here, I, I think that, you know, that they have uh, used... Uh, one half, 50%, the Council on Foreign Relations under Clinton and Lawrence Summers and uh, Timothy Gaetner and Jamie Dimon and that bunch. And they laundered out 50% of two, roughly 207 quadrillion, which it was the calculated amount owned by this trust. And now they're wanting the people to stand good for that, PJ. Well, people can't stand good for that. That's a banking debt. That's not a people's debt. That's not a people's debt. The people, the people now, after we paid the debt, the people now have every right to demand that that Federal Reserve be closed down because they are not acting in compliance with law. And as of December the 24th, 1919, when they put forth the edge and put it into act of Congress on Christmas Eve again, now they could stay in business as long as they were in compliance with law. For PJ, they've never been in compliance with law. They have never paid a debt. They've stolen everything they could steal. Well, now then, this trust stands, whether I'm here, whether I'm dead, whatever, and that 206 quadrillion, or 207 quadrillion, that it was calculated by the Central Intelligence Actuarials in 1989. And the calculations through the West Coast Federal Reserve bank saw through their calculators off. They couldn't reconcile it until, I think it was 98, when they were impeaching Bill Clinton. Finally, they found they had found where the glitch was. It was in the calculations of what was due to this trust. But this trust represents, PJ, it represents every home, every farm, every piece of dirt, every, everything that's ever belonged to the American people. And there's enough there, PJ, that it can help the rest of the nations. And if you want to find out about the trust, you go on the Internet. You look up the Durham Trust. It's there. You look up uh, Durham International LTD Holding Trust, TIAS 12087. It's there. The laws are there which protect it. And it protects all of you. Now, it's not right that we have to suffer such indignities as a thing allowed by a do-nothing Congress and a man occupying the White House who simply cannot set the example for his own race. And setting that example means setting something to be proud of instead of being a Chaka Zulu or being the leader of the Mau Mau's. It means standing up and being proud of something, being proud enough of yourself to represent something and make it better, not make it worse. But this man cannot stand alone. He cannot set the example. Why? Because he too is being blackmailed. Because he is not an American citizen. I think not. the whole thing about blackmail is uh, is really much to the point. I know. It's blackmail, threats, coercion, intimidation, murder, 
When in the hell did this country fall into the mob type activities? Uh, about 1913? No, it was 1945 when Patton was trying to unload his tanks and equipment there at Salerno. They had to allow the mafia access to treasury before they would unload his equipment. That's not a good move. Well, that's what happened. So we've got a lot, a big mess to clean up. You've got the broom and you've got the dustpan to get to work. I'm an old woman. I'm an old woman. But there's plenty of young ones out there that know how to activate a movement. Uh, one can hold a dustpan and the other can sweep like hell. <laughs> the wisdom of the grandmothers. Uh, I wouldn't put. Uh, uh, I wouldn't uh, say that uh, old older women were actually uh, powerless. I think they hold the greatest amount of power, and I, I believe the 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 whole revolutionary uh, movement that's going to happen very very soon that we're on the top of uh, is driven oh, by the grandmothers. I think so. Well, you know, for many, many years, thank, and I don't. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for speaking I, I out and having that, having the, having the courage to do what you do. Thank you. I don't think you have the idea. Hello. Yeah. I don't think you know who I am. I'm one of the five grandmothers of the five nations that have kept these kids straight and narrow all these years. <laughs> well, I, I'm good at guessing. I'm of the five nations of Indian tribes. Yes. yes. So we've kept these children from falling into that uh, trap of revolution. These children are smarter than that. They're smarter than that. And I don't, there's only one race out there that's going for revolution, going for the violence, going for the rape. And you see them in black mobs all over this country. Yeah. Well, the, uh, there's other races in this country that are natural born. And they have enough smarts not to go that route because who in the hell is going to rebuild it and who's going to replace it? Do you know, PJ, that there is not a, when America wants to build something, besides pouring concrete, to get a mason, a true mason, they've got to import them out of Mexico or out of Europe. Our young can't do it. When you look at the destruction around this world that's been created by this group of yahoos, Who's going to repair it? Who's going to replace it? Yeah, instead of uh, learning how to kill people and to shoot drones, they should have been, well, they need to be re-educated to build, build houses and uh, build schools and uh, village halls and places like that. Uh, they should and plant be learning. vegetables and... That's correct. They should be learning. Now we're looking at a new uh, new age. We're looking at intergalactic travel. And we should have more youngsters out there very, very interested in this. They should be the new scientists. Yep. We have uh, molecular molecular Molecular, I can't talk today. <laughs> molecular physics? Molecular yes. biology. And transportation. And we have all of this going on. And we really need to have our young educated in these fields. We have new energy sources that need to be um, explored by the young. There's more energy. PJ runs up and down these rivers. There's enough to support the entire United States. Hydroelectricity. Why don't they use it? It's too inexpensive. 
Yeah, they can't. <laughs> they can't charge too. Well, they can. They can charge too much, but it's it's uh, it's too easy. There's uh, there, there's so many things and there's so many uh, restrictions that have been artificially placed on on us. You know, like, like the idea that uh, we have to use uh, gasoline and and uh, they, they raise the price. They squeeze more and more out energy out from the human, um, the everyday person. And uh, it has. Uh, you know, I think it's like they've got to the limit now. There's nothing more. Is it? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. You're wrong, dear. There's a whole new world that's expanding there. Do you know the universe is expanding? Oh, yeah. The universe, the un time is expanding. So we've got a lot of things that these youngsters need to be taking a look at. I wish I was young. I could sit there. There's so many things I would like to do in those fields. And... You know, I was one of the gifted children, and I was, I, they started educating me at four. And through the years, I picked up seven degrees. But I, it wasn't easy, PJ. A lot of times I had to shoot pool just to get through at the union hall just to get the money for school, you know. So... It was, it's not been easy, but it's been a learning process. A learning, for, for people to learn, and, and every day is a learning process. Every day. If you just open your eyes and your ears and you watch and you listen, it's a learning process. Don't read anything that's trash. Read something that you can learn something from. Because when you read something that's trash, you've wasted moments of your lifetime. So, there's just a lot that the young ones need to start thinking about. Little John John, I remember when he was little. He used to crawl up and he'd sit on his daddy's line and he'd say, Teach me. Teach me. And he was just a little guy, still in his rompers. <laughs> and he's still one of your students. Pardon? And he's still one of your students. No, John John, I'm talking a little John John Kennedy. Oh, that John John. <laughs> mm -hmm. That little John John, teach me. Teach me, Daddy, teach me. Show me, show me. And his daddy always took the time to explain it to him and to show him. But you know, fathers don't have that time for their children anymore. And that's, and that's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. I love spending time with my son. I have a 17-year-old son. We have good times together. Oh, I tell you, I had, my son was one of the most brilliant young men. God, he was brilliant. He was something to be proud of. When he and I, he and I had the falling, falling out over, he did something that I didn't approve of. And I've never spoke to the young man since. But he said, Mom, you have to admit, you're a hard act to follow. But you know, PJ, I've had to be because I've always had the responsibility of everybody else on my shoulders. VK, so, what, dear? Thank you. It's it's been a real honor to speak with you. Oh, well, thank you, dear. This this was a very good good time for us to sit and talk. It has. Mm -hmm. Very nice time. Lovely. And Excuse me. Go. I, my goodness, we've been on here for over a half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, so, 
Is it what they say? How time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> That's right. It was just a, a, a little moment, an, uh, an accidental moment of, of uh, history for me. And uh, uh, as I said, it's been an honour and a, a real pleasure to speak with you this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, and uh, God bless you. And uh, you're only just getting going. Don't give me this. <laughs> oh, my goodness, dear. You know, I always say, well, you know, they'll say, well, don't you die on us. We've got a lot to do. And I say, oh, my God, I'm not going to die. Uh, you're not done. The good, the good Lord hasn't, I haven't finished what he sent me here to do, and the devil's scared to death of me. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did die uh, last October. Uh, I, I flatlined at the hospital. Oh, wow. A year ago. And, Another well, year. You know, yeah. October's yeah. a weird month. <laughs> And, well, I had my heart attack and uh, another heart attack in 2004. And um, so I had a quadruple bypass. But anyway, um, when I had this uh, flat line last year, there was another party there with me when I was in the uh, uh, emergency room. And the lady, she said, you know, she says it was just like, I could see him. VK? Yeah, JP, you there? Yes. <laughs> we're, we're getting phone calls. Uh, it, it seems to be the, the, the right moment to, uh, to call this to a close. Well, so, then, I thank you so very much, and feel free to use whatever you find useful. Bless your heart. Thank you so much, and... and Keep up the good work. Thank you, dear. VK Jarman, thank you. Beyond Beyond.